Hello everybody, welcome to Talk About Houses. I'm Todd. I'm Juana. Okay, so we are going to talk about the types of properties that investors prefer. Mm -hmm. uh, now this has changed slightly over the years. Mm -hmm. We're seeing investors having a specific preference for properties. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, In the past, uh, there were different kinds of investors. Some investors would prefer multiplexes, mm -hmm. um, maybe small apartment complexes, 24 units. Maybe they would put a property manager in one and then uh, give them free rent and then they would manage the whole thing. That was because then they, they could be out of state and someone was there on, on, this, on site. Um, and then you have the traditional investor who is just a mom and pop operation. They go maybe the trustee sale buy a house or they go out in the market buy a house, probably in an older neighborhood or maybe in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And they, because it's familiar and close to them, it's something they can manage and something that they know. But what we're seeing, and this is partially because in our market in Las Vegas, we have more out of state investors mm -hmm. that are coming in like crazy buying, part of what's pushing prices up. And they have a different preference. You happen to know this because you're working with a bunch of out-of-state investors and managing their properties and their portfolio properties. Right. What is the trend you're seeing in what they're looking for and why? So the trend I'm seeing is that they are looking for brand new construction or something very, very new. Okay. And, the, and, and there are several reasons for that. Uh, you know, the obvious reasons are, are things like, well, with a brand new construction or something very new, you're going to have uh, a lot longer runway for things like the roof and appliances and things like that, right? So, so the house is going to need repairs way down the road as opposed to maybe uh, much sooner. But the other reason is, uh, while investors are fine doing things like paint and carpet and window coverings, uh, you know, what they can't really get their hands around and their heads around is spending money on uh, really bringing the property um, current as far as the sensibilities of what uh, current tenants want. So that means uh, you know the, the size of the rooms, the floor plans. So they're looking for these open floor plans with the, with the great room concept as opposed to uh, all these sectioned off rooms, you know, yep. this living room, this dining room, this family room, that sort of thing. So they're, they're looking for the open floor plans because that's what's popular now. Yep. Uh, so they're looking for uh, enough bathrooms, right? Uh, multi-gen houses. Right, yep. multi-gen houses. So multi-gen houses, and we've done videos on this before, are very popular. Let's put a, let's post one. Yes. Okay, we're gonna post um, right here <laughs> a multi-gen house. This is a walkthrough one I did, and you can watch it and, um, but save it to the side and then watch it when we're done with this video. Right. Okay. So, but the point of this that I'm trying to make is that investors are willing to do things that will turn a house quickly, but they're not willing to do structural things, right? So they're not willing to, to move walls and uh, okay. you know redo the, the, the ceilings and um, make, make, the, um, make the rooms bigger, make the, the ceilings taller, things like that. Yeah. So they're, that's why they're looking for properties that are newer so that as, as we, as we say, uh, they have good bones, right? So yeah. that's and that is very a important TV series, so <laughs> we're not, uh, yeah, it's the name of an HGTV series. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's called Good Bones. Oh, I did not know that. They're house flippers in India. It's a mom and daughter, and they flip houses. Oh, cool. It's called Good Bones. Cool. Anyway, it's pretty, my mom loves it. I, we don't, we don't <laughs> want to actually watch it at all. But I, I okay, so um, here's a question, an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. So you'll watch the video about the um, multi-gen house, and you'll see this trend where when you walk in, you have this big open space. It's the living room, dining room, all one space. You don't really have a formal kitchen or a formal dining room. And then you just have up, you have bedrooms upstairs. And uh, you know, older homes don't have that. They actually are sectioned off. They have a little living room and then a little separate dining room, then a separate kitchen. And, and it's like they took the downstairs of the house, maybe it's two story and split into quarters and it's all walled off. And uh, that's not super popular. Mm -hmm. And so we're, I think we're gonna see this investors move to away from functionally obsolescent homes, yes. which they are functionally obsolescent. If you go into most houses, especially millennials and Gen Z, they don't have, they like they don't understand the formal dining room. Mm -hmm. And I know this because I was in an Airbnb one time with a bunch of um, millennials and they were for a, a startup event in San Francisco. And so we were in this thing and um, 
they had taken over the dining room table with they were all sitting there with laptops mm -hmm. and stuff it was just like it was an office they turned it into right. an office right right so it's functionally like the formal dining room thing it doesn't fit our lifestyle anymore so investors are smart about this mm -hmm. and they understand that tenants don't want to like that plus the other thing too is imagine this you're a tenant and you walk into a brand new home mm -hmm. like you you don't you don't you know you don't have to worry about painting it and carpeting it it's just it's ready to go and, and right. but this has always been the trade-off in the past investors didn't want to go buy new homes mm -hmm. because they were more expensive mm -hmm. they were way more expensive than maybe 20 percent more expensive than a resale home for the same amount mm -hmm. and right right but that's really not that big of a deal anymore no it isn't and you know what's interesting is that uh, in the past, people valued a land so that they wanted bigger yards and that sort of thing. But an investor doesn't want that. An investor right. wants just enough yard to satisfy a tenant, but not enough yard to where it's expensive to do the landscaping and do the upkeep. Because let's face it, when we're talking about landscaping for um, for a rental, we want to put in something that is relatively inexpensive and that requires little to no maintenance because. Tenants don't generally want to maintain uh, landscaping, mm -hmm. and in Las Vegas in particular, landscaping is expensive to maintain because water is expensive. Uh, so it, it really deteriorates very quickly uh, when, it's, when it's a rental. And that's why you're seeing, particularly in new home subdivisions, uh, all you see is rock landscaping and, and a couple little plants and that's it. And the backyards generally will have uh, maybe larger patios than they used to have. Mm -hmm. And then the, rec the rest is either artificial uh, turf or rock. In most rentals, it's going to be rock because artificial turf is expensive. And even though you may not realize it, it does require some maintenance. And again, I go back saying, you know, tenants don't generally want to do maintenance. Um, so that's the reason why we do uh, these uh, landscaping plans in the backyard that require little to no water. Yeah. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that uh, investors tend to not like pools. Mm -hmm. For a number of reasons, um, not as much liability, but there is a they are they can be a pain and they can be expensive. But the excess amount you pay for a house with a pool, you don't get in back in rent. Mm -hmm. There's not a good ROI for mm -hmm. having the pool in the backyard, right? Right. And if you do see rentals with pools, usually it's because it was a, someone who lived in it mm -hmm. who upgraded or moved out of the market but wanted to keep it as a rental because maybe in five years they're going to move back, mm -hmm. right? Right. But uh, you out of like I have I don't think I've ever had an investor come to town and say I want to get a rental with a pool like never they usually say the opposite <laughs> never they're usually more concerned whether there's an HOA or not yes right yes um, so let's go through just some categories really quick for everybody what's the downside what's the benefit and the downside really quick of condos for investors first the benefit uh, the benefit is that they um, they're generally easier to maintain. Sure, you don't have grass and right, um, and there there's something that are that's very familiar to to tenants. So because it's like an apartment, right? It's like an apartment. Yep. So they're they're relatively easy to rent that way. Okay. What about a downside? What's a downside to having a rental in a condo when you're an investor? Uh, the biggest downside is the HOA because let's yeah. face it, HOAs for condos are generally speaking more than for single family homes. And we're talking. A really, really cheap one's probably what one eighty. Yeah. And and if you're in a high rise, it's five hundred and up. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about guard gated neighborhood luxury homes versus just nicer homes, but like not in non HOAs? What's the advantage of the luxury guard gated? Uh, you know, it, it's a nice home. Uh, it's going to maintain its value and have less value fluctuation depending okay. on what the market's doing. Sure. Um, so from that perspective, it's a safer investment. Maybe you think it'll get more rent a little bit? Uh, it will get more rent. Okay. It's not going to be commensurate with the price though. Oh, okay. okay. So this is a phenomenon in luxury homes. Right. The difference between a million and a $2 million house is a hundred percent. It's twice as much, but you don't get twice as much rent. You have diminishing returns, right? Right. And, the, and then the other problem you have with gated neighborhoods are HOA fees, yes. right? They're substantial because now the guard, especially guard gate, guard right. gates, 
as soon as you get guard gate, the price goes way up because now right. you have a lot of people to pay and there's more stuff being maintained. Right. The other thing is um, not only are the HOA fees higher, but then the restrictions are uh, more onerous too. So in particular, when you've got tenants, uh, it just becomes a little bit more difficult. So let me give you an example. There are HOAs where they do not allow on-street parking. So let's say that it's a very nice neighborhood. Uh, it's a six-bedroom house. So you've got lots of people. Uh, maybe these people are young adults and they all have vehicles. Yep. So even though you have this you know, big house and you've got the garage and the driveway, there may still not be enough room for everybody's cars right. between the driveway and the garage and now somebody's got to park on the street and that may be a, a problem. Sure, there's a lot of HOAs have no street parking. No street parking. And then some HOAs actually have occupancy limits for uh, non family members, right. meaning they're separate families. They mm -hmm. would consider four roommates, like you can do it in San Francisco, mm -hmm. right? Every you have to do it there. But here in HOA may say, yo, you can't really, do, that's not allowed. Right. So let me give you an example. So if you have, if you have a house in Las Vegas and it's a multi-gen house, so you've got the main house and then like a the little guest house kind of situation, um, there are HOAs that say you can't have uh, that guest house be occupied by non-family members, so you can't subdivide it. Or right? Airbnb it or rent it to right. another so, person. Um, yeah, so, so, so there are restrictions like that. Okay, um, so the bottom line is that investors are shifting over from traditionally resale homes, mm -hmm. preferencing newer and brand new homes. Right. They're buying a lot. The mm -hmm. new home builders, a lot of times used to have strict restrictions about uh, non-owner occupants. They have loosened those restrictions. So it depends on the builder. Um, okay, so, so and, the, and right. the area that's Right, in. yeah. So you've got builders who uh, are saying, you know, we don't care if you're an investor or not. And there are builders that say absolutely no investors. Yep, And sure. then there's the in-between that say, well, we'll take some up to a certain number and that sort of thing. And and that, that has a lot to do with other priorities that, that that builder has. Do you think because investors are buying newer homes, they'll keep them longer? That's a great question. And I think the answer is yes. Okay. I think uh, that's that's a large part of the reason why they're looking for these newer homes because it's a long-term investment okay. for them. Yeah. They're looking to keep them uh, for you know, 20, 30 years. And okay. the reason I say that is, first of all, because my experience with, with the investor I'm working with, but these investors that I'm working with are uh, at that point in their lives where they're maybe 15 years away from retirement. And so when they're 10, 15 years away from retirement, they're looking at these investment homes and they're saying, look, by the time I retire, this thing will be paid off and this is part of my retirement plan. Okay. So they're not looking to sell this thing when they retire. They're looking for that thing to be paid off by the time they retire so that they, so that, that will provide them with cash uh, in their retirement years. Okay. Um, so I think the best deal that I've heard yet mm -hmm. is the house across the street from where my mom lives. It's <laughs> on a golf course. And the guy bought the house a couple years ago. And of course, he paid two years ago prices. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to rent it out for three years and then retire from California and move out here and just live here and retire. But I want to buy it now because I think prices might go up, but I just want to get the house and I'll rent it out. And he got the house completely rehabbed and is renting it. And in a year, he's going to move in. And he's, it's like the deal of the century because if he had waited three years, he would pay probably 100 grand more yeah, in that, easily. For that easily for that house, right? Um, okay. What about potentially investors who are saying, I'm, I want to move my money out of California because of potential craziness? <laughs> Is that, do you think that drives, and then they feel better because, the, remember, these are out of state investors, right? And so they're buying new homes because they're out of state. They can't be at the property. They don't want to deal with repairs. They still hire a property manager because right. they still have to deal with stuff. Um, do you think that also impacts like the type of home they buy because they're moving, they're, they're, they're not local? I, I think it probably does, although I think that that's always been going on. Uh, but I think that, again, they're looking at it in the same way that they would rather have a more updated uh, property because, look, if you're going to spend the money, uh, wouldn't you rather, for, for the same money, you would rather get a better product, right? Okay. Uh, so why not get a better product for the same money or just nominally more? Okay. 
Um, if you made it to the end of the video, uh, thank you very much. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell. We'll put our information down in the description and you can get in contact with us at any time and leave us comments. We'd love to hear from you. Absolutely. Uh, like our video, share it with your friends and family uh, and uh, leave us love notes. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on another video. Bye.